Hey guys, we haven't had a relaxed sort of hang back HD video for a while. Uh, so this is just a uh, little update video as well as more than anything, a recent acquisition video. Uh, I realized that we never did a video, we, like there's more than one of me. Like I never did a video on the Buckeye Scale Classic uh, show last month, so a month ago now almost. Uh, we did not win anything. Uh, I've said before, and I'll maintain until... Uh, I don't have anything else to put it in as far as show uh, go. That Tim McLaren is a great model. Uh, it does well in judge contests, but it is not a people's choice type of uh, award-winning model, uh, especially in any kind of uh, setting like that, because you're going to get a lot of, of course, domestic stuff, uh, a lot of full detail stuff that is, well, let's just face it, better than what I'm going to put out there with a curbside, out-of-the-box uh, model. I actually was going to put it in out of the box and I got to the show and realized that I had forgot the instructions at home, so back into uh, competition it went. I got to that show more to support uh, the club itself. Several friends of mine who uh, belong to or used to belong to the club uh, had a chance to meet Bob Downey for the first time, uh, who's part of the club that puts on the uh, NNL South or the Southern Nationals, I believe is technically the correct name for it, down there in Atlanta. As well as just hooking up with a lot of good friends that I haven't seen for a little while. I've uh, met a few uh, new YouTubers. Got to see Cliff. Uh, his models did real well. And that's all old news at this point. I, there was really nothing to say about the show. Bad. Uh, it was really, really uh, crowded compared to what I remember it being last year. Of course, last year I sort of got there uh, at the last minute. <clears throat> so I you know, can't compare the whole days where the crowds. I didn't know the vendor ran out of food again. So clearly there were enough people there. Uh, there was a little goof with the ballots. They accidentally gave the ballots out with you when you walked in, and they meant not to give them out until uh, noontime when the when the uh, entry cutoff was, so that voting wouldn't start early. Uh, but they really tabulated the votes real quick uh, and had us out of there relatively uh, relatively on time and prompt. Um, but hey, like I said that's it. We picked up a few things. Uh, I have a cat that insists on saying hello, so hello. Um, and we'll go through the acquisitions there uh, in a second. This will pretty much be my little April acquisitions. I do have a few things in the wind. I uh, have a box of um, three SLS AMG GT3 cars coming from uh, Hobby Search. You've seen those before. They're just there for, as blanks for all the decals I have. And then I have one kit coming from Hong Kong uh, that fills in a, a, a much empty slot in my Toyota collection. Uh, a kit that sort of completes part of my Toyota collection entirely, actually, and it's something I've been hunting for for about two years. It popped up, uh, I want to say Thursday, Wednesday night or Thursday night. It was right after I got out of work. I always go through my uh, eBay search at the, you know, before I go home, just to give me something to do in the parking lot with my car. Uh, but now cools off. We finally got to the point here in, the, in, in Western Pennsylvania where we have to worry about cooling our car off rather than warming it up. And uh, I saw it, and I pounced on it. Uh, I actually got a really good deal on it, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. But I pounced on it to make sure I uh, could get one. Actually, I ended up having two of them, so, eh, well, whatever. But So, there are a few things here that won't be shown. And then, uh, probably, I'm not exactly sure, maybe mid-May or so, uh, I'm going to ship more from Hobby Link Japan. I do have some stuff I picked up here from Hobby Link Japan. Most of it's decals, because decals don't cost uh, anything, really, to, to ship. Uh, once you have a few kits that are going to go out, and I did have three models that I needed to go uh, out, or else they were going to ship on their own anyway, so I just shipped a whole plethora of decals with them. I did get uh, some new SK decals in that I'm going to show you as well, and um, I guess that's pretty much it. So we'll spin the camera this way, and, or this way. <laughs> I'm out of camera. We'll spin the camera this way. And uh, hopefully we'll try to go through this up uh, relatively quickly. I don't want to be here all day. Uh, but it's mostly... mostly uh, Stuff I picked up at the shows recently is one eBay thing in there. So, anyway, without further ado, over there. All right, guys. So first up, uh, some kits I picked up from our local show uh, vendor guy that also has a uh, actual physical building now. Uh, so these first three Mobius kits are stuff I picked up from him uh, due to the fact that he runs a uh, pretty good price on them, uh, and I don't have to ship them from say Tower Hobbies or something like that. This, of course, the new. Uh, uh, I'm trying to find my pointer because I wanted to point at it, but I, I lost my pointer. Dang it. Uh, Mobius 65 Plymouth Belvedere. Brand new uh, kit that just came out. Modified tooling of the 65 satellite, obviously. 
And I seriously cannot find a single pointer anywhere around here. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> ah, I had just painted stuff with them, and I I don't know where they went. That's 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 fantastic. I know it's 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 thrilling to you guys, but. How did my fucking things go? <laughs> and go. All right, guys. So here's uh, the first thing I picked up. First three of these kits, actually, all these Mobius kits. I got from our local uh, show vendor who also uh, has a brick and mortar actual hobby shop here as of recently. This, obviously, the brand new uh, Plymouth Belvedere 1 by Mobius. Uh, modified reissue based off of the 65 Plymouth uh, satellite tooling. This, of course, for the two door uh, post sedan, uh, as opposed to the hard top version that the uh, Belvedere is. Uh, so we get the focus there. Uh, you do get two sets of wheels with this kit. Uh, you get uh, these sort of steel wheels with the dog dish hubcaps, as well as uh, these mag wheels that are on the side here. Uh, be aware that this really can't be built necessarily uh, grandpa car factory stock like this. I mean, yeah, it does come with, uh, you know, the dog dish hubcaps. It'll look like a, uh, a dog, uh, a uh, grandpa car, but... Uh, this thing only has one engine in it. It's a max wedge. It's only, you know, it's got the very complicated uh, sort of uh, A990 uh, exhaust system. Uh, I know some people were complaining about the fact that, you know, there's a family here, and it's not really a family car. It's more of a day two, day three uh, sleeper hot rod, really. Uh, I have not opened this, as you can see, and I'm not going to do it right now, but I have heard quite a bit, few people saying that their bodies have been warped. Uh, with the Belvedere, so I uh, am sort of at this point avoiding opening it because I'm kind of scared that the body will be warped. So, at any rate, uh, you know, just another one from the pile here. I, they, they seem to be pretty decent kits themselves. Uh, they don't have, you know, so much of the fit problems that other ones have, although I did see somebody recently complain that they couldn't get the glass in, uh, so I don't know if that's a factor of the new sort of roof that would be on this with the post sedan, uh, but you know, that's becoming a reputation of Mobius now with the glass, outside glass not fitting correctly. Uh, I picked, actually picked up all three of the Mobius, re, uh, you know, sort of quote-unquote reissues that they did here recently. Uh, this is the 54 Hudson Hornet Special. Uh, different from the Hudson Hornet uh, sedan that they did a few, uh, towards the end of last year. This is a fastback roof. It's also a very, very base model stripped-down car. You actually get these wheels in it for a change. Uh, the box art for the 54 Hudson had these wheels in it, and then you only got the the um, uh, mag wheels, or the mag wheels, the wire wheels in it, the Kelsey Hayes wire wheels. Uh, this one does actually come with these sort of uh, steel wheel hubcap style wheels, although they are one-piece wheels, so you got to paint, if you're going to paint them body color, you got to paint this outside edge to them. Um, but anybody who has any of the Moby's Hudson's knows that because that's these are the wheels that were also in the earlier ones. And you can see here, uh, whoever did the build-up of the test shot just left them completely chrome and didn't paint the body color uh, trim with them. It'll be interesting to see if that if that body color is actually correct or not. Uh, beyond that, you know, it's basically the 54 kit with a different body. Uh, this is not the junior drag car, much to my uh, chagrin, because uh, I kind of sort of told you guys it was going to be. And then that was originally what the rumor was, and then it sort of turned out to not be. Uh, there will be, of course, another kit coming out uh, in the future that will be the Junior Drag Car. And this, of course, is the uh, Mobius Model King uh, 1970 F100 Custom Short Bed. This is pretty much the exact same kit as the 1969 uh, kit was, except it's, of course, got the new grill here for, to, to represent the uh, 1970 grill. It also has a... Uh, new bumper in the back here so you don't get the big goofy step bumper that came with the 71 and I'm pretty sure that's pretty the only uh, maybe the uh, hubcaps are new because they are mentioned here as being dog dish hubcaps <coughs> I'm not sure what other if you get another set of wheels with it or not and then uh, this one has a straight six in it so like I said it's it's more or less the 69 just with the new front end on it now on to Buckeye Scale Classic swag. 
Uh, I picked this up. This is a kit I've been uh, looking for for a little while. Um, mainly because I was, I've had the Ebro Forgane, and it has pretty much, you know, the car from here down in that e and it has a different body on it. So I've been kind of wanting one of this, one of the last historic car series uh, kits that to me it did that I don't have just one of anyway. Uh, had had it on my back order at Hobby Link Japan for a year and a half almost. And then uh, the guy who has the hobby shop that I bought the Mobius stuff from also, like I said, he's a vent kit vendor at shows. And this happened to be in his stack of stuff and I managed to snag it real quick. I didn't even have a price on it. I was just like, here, what does he want for this thing? And uh, I got a pretty good deal on it, I think. I'm not sure what the... Yeah, I actually got a very good deal on it uh, compared to what the price is. And, uh, that's, you know, he just wanted to be rid of it, I think. It was just been something that was hanging around in the back, and uh, and I had not seen it pop up recently in his stuff. So I was happy to actually have gone to the show that day because, like I said, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and I didn't seem to be getting one. Uh, a friend of mine... Uh, a friend of his had these uh, Alfa Romeo uh, DTM cars. These are the reissue ones. You can tell because they don't have any of the Michelin logos on them. Uh, but I need these because I, of course, have the uh, decals to do several other uh, Alfa Romeo 155 DTM cars other than just the factory uh, the out-of-the-box kit. I actually gave the decals in this kit away to a guy at the show because he was like, oh man, I wish I had some Jägermeister decals and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, here, ha take them. I don't want them. I'm not going to use them for anything. So, uh, you know, the fill-in decals I have do everything that the decals in the kit would have done. And then I picked, he had both of them, so I grabbed this one too. So, of course, the Alpha Corsa version. Uh, the differences between the two pretty much are the wheels. You get the, uh, you get the five-spoke uh, speed lines in this one and the Oz Racing wheels in the other one. Again, you can tell the new ones from the old ones because the new ones don't have Michelin logos anywhere on them, and you got to pick up the uh, the fill-in sheets for it. Uh, one eBay purchase because this is the other uh, GT1 Lamborghini Murcielagio race car that Aoshima made. This is the Writer Engineering one. Uh, this is actually the export version because uh, there should be a whole bunch of uh, like Japanese printing and, and stuff on here. You can see it over here. It should look like this box over here with all the color combinations and the home office address. And it just has a giant Aoshima logo on it. You cut that out and make a bumper sticker out of it. It does have sort of all that, you know, home office stuff on this side, but it doesn't have any of the colors because I guess they assume that people over here are too stupid to find Mr. Hobby colors, even though most really well-stocked hobby shops will carry them or will be able to order them for you because they are distributed outside of Japan. Uh, this... Represents the 24 hours of Spa in 2010, and uh, it's ironic because you know we talk a lot about the Blanc Paint Endurance Series decals. Well, this one's just sponsored by Blanc Paint entirely. If you did not know, they are a maker of fine Italian watches. And then uh, kits we got out of of uh, Hobby Link Japan are this Fujimi reissue of the Nissan Cedric Gloria. This is the Cedric. This is the Gloria. You can build this car either way out of the box. It has basically two grills. Uh, the wheels are the same, only the center parts are different, if you notice. So there's the one set of wheels, but two sets of hubcaps. Uh, there's some minor interior differences between the two, mostly paint. Uh, and actually, ironically, for some reason, they made these in export versions. So there are left-hand drive dashboards in these kits, because I have the other one. Um, Please hold while I grab a model. They also, not that long ago, had reissued it this way, which is the, oops, let's go backward a little bit, the Gran Turismo SV version, and this is the Turbo Brome VIP. This is sort of the, these were, uh, you know, run-of-the-mill uh, cars as far as what they represent uh, in terms of being, uh, you know, this is basically, you know, your Ford Taurus, Chevy Impala type of vehicle over in Japan. And so this was sort of the sporty version, and this was the luxury version. And they're more or less the same. Uh, really, the only difference between them is uh, the front the sportier version has some fog lights, and there's uh, different wheels in the, uh, in the Super Bowl loss version. And then one other kit is their reissue of the Nissan Laurel. Uh, this is the HC33 version. 
which uh, puts it in the, uh, I want to say, very, very early 90s. Has that very early 90s uh, Japanese four-door bland family sedan uh, design anyway. You get two sets of wheels with this. You get a factory stock set as well as the uh, long champs that the car is sitting on. You also get two sets of tires uh, because the long champs are a wider uh, wheel, so you need different tires anyway. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fairly decent kit. Ironically, this and those... Uh, Cedric Glories all ride the exact same chassis pan. There are just some different parts. This comes with a sort of a one-piece wheel well and gas tank in the back, and the other one comes with a couple different pieces. But you can see where the cost savings uh, comes into effect over there uh, in Fujimi land. Uh, some note on the decals, because it wouldn't be a show if we want some decals. Uh, this is the Shunko Models reprint of the 1994 Tamiya AMG Mercedes C-Class DTM. Uh, these are pretty much just, like I said, an exact reprint of the uh, decals that the uh, kit comes with. So it's like not like this is a new sponsorship or anything else like this. I have this kit specifically. Uh, I have the uh, Studio 27 carbon fiber set for it, of course, because why wouldn't I? And uh, basically I had been waiting for them to reprint these for a little while now uh, because I don't trust any 1990s Tamiya decals for the most part. And this, like I said, is just a straight reprint of the of the decals that come in the kit. And for uh, basically 12 bucks, I have brand new decals for a 20-plus-year-old uh, you know, kit. These are Studio 27 decals. This is the uh, Italian GT 2015 uh, Sport NU is the team uh, that ran the car. A Mercedes SLS AMG GT3 sponsored by Wido Technologies. Uh, despite the weird registry as far as the color goes, uh, this car is silver and white. You do have to mask and do the two-tone on your own, the white on the hood and the uh, side. You get the stripes themselves as decals, but you have to paint the white separately. Not a major deal. Uh, this could very well be the last set of uh, SLS decals ever made. Uh, I'm not trying to make that sound like, oh my god, you need to go get them, but just because we're moving to the AMG GT GT3 car as well as the M6 GT3 and stuff like that, uh, unless they run unless they run some privateer teams that are running this this year's Blanc Pain Endurance Series, or they go backwards in time and run some older uh, cars that have never been made before, uh, or at least some decal sets that have never been done before. Uh, then this pretty much might be it because the Ita this is you know 2015 Italian GT. Uh, we did the video a while ago about the uh, the McLaren decals that represent the team that finished in like 10th or 11th in the points, and these guys didn't do much better because Italian GT is dominated by a uh, Ferrari and Lamborghini. Uh, let's see here, what else? What else? What else? I uh, got some fill-in decals from Taboo Design. This is sideways, and it refuses to lay straight, so you just have to sort of imagine it straight. Uh, or we do, I guess we would just do this. Uh, these are the early season option decals for the Ebro Honda McLaren MP430. Uh, they include, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up. Yeah, pretty good focus. There's tiny, weeny, weeny little Johnny Walker logos here, depending on which one of these... Grand Prix, you got Australian, Malaysian, or Chinese, uh, Chinese, and these Johnny Walker decals are not included in the kit because evil, to evil uh, tobacco alcohol. Uh, also, apparently, they're missing these Bon Cafe ones and uh, maybe more correct driver names and numbers. This appear to be some carbon fiber pieces for uh, some wings. I gotta look and see what exactly that goes to. There's no actual like you know. Uh, what am I trying to think of? No actual uh, instruction sheet. No d placement sheet. So you got to do some research with this. And then the other uh, taboo design thing here would be, these are the fill-in decals for the uh, Alpha Corsa and the Jägermeister factory decal sets for the new reissue of the Tamiya kits. Uh, you need the white Michelins and the white Michelin men for the Alpha Corsa car, and then the black Michelin logos, the black Michelin men, and the shell logos uh, go on the Jägermeister car, and then there's some tire decals uh, there too. 
Um, exact placement and whatnot. Again, you got to do your research because there's no placement guide for it, but it shouldn't be that hard. It's just some associate sponsorships. Uh, and then, staying with Studio 27 for half a second longer, I got two more sheets of this. This is the 94 uh, Alpha 155 TIV6 carbon fiber. This goes to the Alpha Corsa in the Jaeger car. And then a brand new set of decals that's just been uh, released is this which is the Alfa Romeo 155 TIV6 International Touring Championship, which is the 96-95 cars. And that goes to the uh, Bosch and the uh, Martini-sponsored car. So I have I got two more of these because I just picked up those two kits I just showed you. Uh, those will be you know, put into other cars in later years uh, as I get around to building them. And then I got uh, three sets of these. Because these decals, these carbon fiber decals, tend to disappear relatively quickly, and this will be this one. Will, I mean, well, I don't know, end up being this specific one, but you know, play along with with me here. This will go to the Bosch car. This will go to the Martini car, and then I've got those uh, decals to make the Alpha Corsa Martini car that's red, and so that'll go to that set. So I only have three sets of '96 decals plus the two. Well, the two kit box decals and the spare set of decals. So I've only got three of the later cars to build, and so I've got carbon fiber for them all now. And then last but not least, these are uh, straight from SK decals themselves, so these are not like eBay or anywhere else. These are uh, the three sets they've done for the uh, B-Max Chevy Cruze. Uh, that'll be 11 models that you can build all together. If you build the three factory cars uh, with the decals that come with them, plus there's four sets from Autocolor and these four sets, so there's a total of 11 of them you can build at the moment. Uh, this one for the Aviva car from the 2012 Shanghai Grand Prix. One of the very few non-Macau Grand Prix decals that uh, SK does uh, when they have the subject matter to do uh, Macau Grand Prix cars. Uh, you basically have to paint the uh, rocker panel blue as well as the back bumper itself blue. Uh, and then the rest of the car is yellow. Decals will take care of pretty much everything else. Decals in here are chopped up. There's two sheets of decals. But you can see... Uh, even through the uh, little uh, wax paper uh, thing on here, these things have just fantastic register, fantastic printing, uh, really top-notch stuff out of a small company. Um, the other non-Macau decals, this set uh, for the, uh, I guess this would be what, Valiant, maybe, uh, crews that ran the uh, Portima Grand Prix in 2012. This one's a little more complicated in its painting masking. You do have to paint the red parts uh, in the front and the back, as well as, uh, I think that might actually be it, come think of it, because the big, the, the uh, striping here, the, like this white stripe and this blue stripe around here is, a, is one decal. I believe the roof decal, uh, you have to paint the roof white. Well, the whole car is white, obviously, underneath that, but but, like, uh, in order to mask it out correctly, this is a decal. This whole wrap around is a decal. And then uh, the front of the V here is a decal. This red part's a decal. So the white paint will show through here. And then, uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's complicated, but it's not, in, it's not nearly as bad as some stuff uh, that we've done in the past or shown you in the past. Obviously, uh, there's no big complicated fades or anything else like that. And then there's two sets here. Uh, there's basically, basically the same team. This is Bamboo Engineering, uh, a team out of China that runs the Macau Grand Prix. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I get the right years up here. This will be the 2011 version of the Macau Grand Prix car. It's a whoops, yeah, LKM sponsored vehicle here. Um, you're basically here going to have to paint the orange bumper in the back as well as the uh, yellow and white. Uh, they include this white area here for this whole bottom lightning bolt and include this edge here and this edge here for these stripes. So you don't have to be, you know, it's not a, a incredibly specific masking. Uh, it's very nice that you don't have to try to mask off this whole lightning bolt pattern on the side here. Uh, you know, just paint the hood white, I think, and I believe the, the decal will cover the, sort of the tops of the fenders here. And then, uh, you know, paint the back there orange, but not all in all, not bad. And then this is the car that the same team ran the next year in 2012. This, again, very uh, decal-laden. It's you know, kind of hard to see through here. But the second sheet here in the back, 
includes all of this striping on the side here, uh, this like little kick striping at the very top here, as well as one big red decal for the roof. And I think the, basically the only thing you have to paint on here that's not either white or yellow, and yeah, you got to do a two-tone here, but I mean, at, it, it's a pretty simple mask for it, is paint this back bumper red. Uh, this little gray area in the plate insert here is a decal, and this gray silver area up front in the grill area is also a decal. So, again, uh, the hardest parts, I think, painting tiny little areas that are very specific, uh, are all done with decals, and then having this red, this red decal up here on the roof is good too, because and then you're not trying, you're not getting a weird bleed over into your white up here, and you ought to be able to, you know, really mask off this back bumper pretty well because you have the you know panel lines here to run your tape through. So anyway, I think that I believe, guys, is actually that. So as we spin the camera around to say goodbye. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed. Uh, we have a whole bunch of stuff sitting over in Hobby Link Japan. All the kits that you would expect me to have gotten. Uh, they're sitting over there waiting. Uh, basically, I just wanted to ship some stuff out because I had uh, a bunch of stuff coming. And I had uh, actually was holding the order because I uh, had ordered a bunch of stuff all at once. And I wanted most of it to come in. So, basically, I have a set of decals. Uh... A Fujimi McLaren we've talked about before, and the Sandbar Fire Truck, and there's one other April kit, and I can't think of what it is. I think actually, no, the April stuff I'm waiting on is the is the the McLaren MP430 carbon fiber decals, the Sandbar Fire Truck, and that uh, Pacific Racing McLaren GT3 car. When that stuff comes in, I probably will ship because uh, I don't think I can have it sit till May when the uh, next kit comes out that I'll be waiting on. So, actually, like I said, if it wouldn't for the stuff I just ordered from uh, the Shizuka show, uh, if you have not watched the stash report this week, go check that out. We talk about all of the model kits coming out of Asia uh, in May, June, and July, uh, at least the newer stuff that's uh, not just straight reissues, and uh, except for Fujimi, of course, because they don't go to the toy shows, but whatever. Uh, but there's some probably some stuff in the rest you might not. There's going to be... Uh, a final tooling to tweak the Mitsubishi uh, Evo X or Evo 10 into 2015 way is sponsor. Uh, the pre-orders for the, for the Ferrari FXXK for June are there. Uh, the Lamborghini Hurricane pre-orders for July are there. Now, that one may not come out in July, but you can pretty much guarantee you that the Tamiya kit will come out on time. Uh, there's the final tooling of the Nissan Sunny pickup truck to its GB122 uh, tooling, that's like a 1988 pickup truck at that point, so it's really uh, sort of a current mini truck in Japan, if you want to call it that. Um, and then uh, there's some, Aoshima is doing a thing where they're going to be taking a bunch of their sort of desperate series and combining them all into new boxing. And so a lot of stuff that you have seen released recently is going to get reboxed into sort of some, a new series, either called The Model Car or The Tuned Car. Uh, Model car will cover like the just basic stuff of factory stock cars, factory stock trucks, vans, and also race cars. And then the tuned car stuff is going to be uh, stuff like the Rocket Bunny Toyota 86s, uh, the VIP cars, the VIP vans, uh, the jacked up 4x4 trucks, the Nissan and the Toyota that they always do. Um, so, you know, they're sort of trying to make it. I think it's really the whole goal is a new uh, new guys in charge of production and for uh, Aoshima. I think the goal is sort of to try to make it easier to order. Uh, one of the things that Revelle does, and I'm not saying that Aoshima is going to suddenly show up at, at Myers and Walmart or anything else like that, but one of the things that Revelle does, if you've ever gone to a Walmart that sells models or a Myers or uh, anywhere else that sells their models, and not a hobby shop, because uh, Michaels and Hobby Lobby do sort of get the same sort of uh, deal, is uh, if you ever notice, Ravel does stuff like Street Burner, Special Edition, Motorsports, um, you know, the Snap Tight line, obviously. I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, looking around here, <laughs> I don't have that many new Ravel kits, to be honest with you, but uh, the Truck Series and stuff like that. Well, you can, if you're buying from Hobbico or whoever, Great Plains is the you know wholesale vendor. Uh, say, I want a Street Burners assortment, and they will send you a case of models that are like three or four different kits in groups of three or four. I'm not sure positively 
what the specifics are breakdown wise. But you get 12 models, and it's like three of one, three of the uh, three by four or four by three, however it's done, uh, and you get an assortment of models. So it's not you're not getting a case of 12 of the same things to put on a shelf at Walmart. You don't need 12 of the same things. You want a little bit of variety for that teeny wheel of shelf space that you got. So in a global sense, that's what Aoshima is doing. They're taking all of these disparate uh, series, combining them into a couple, three, four. The supercars will maintain their own series. Um, and the like, the very specific uh, TV or an anime series will keep their, so Initial D will keep their series and stuff like that. But you, you know, for global distribution purposes, if you want to be able, like, I want a the model car assortment, and they'll send you like thirty six because they're, you can fit more of those long skinny boxes in a in a case. They'll send you thirty six models, and it'll be you know uh, f six model, six different models, and six of each, or it'll be I don't know, could be, you know, I, I guess what three of thirteen. That's uh, three of twelve. Uh, to uh, you know, to get you there, but I think that's the overall goal of it is to sort of simplify what they're doing and then make it easier for you to order a sort of an assortment of models uh, rather than having to order you know an entire distribution case of one thing. <coughs> and I guess, guys, uh, that's it. I, I wanted to do this video earlier, but I've been had my allergies are up now, the temperature's up, and I could not even talk a couple days ago because every time I open my mouth to say something, I cough. Uh, so. We're finally done with that, I hope. Or at least it's calmed down enough that I could talk to you guys today. So at any rate, guys, that's what's going on. Uh, I'm working uh, diligently on getting the BMW 318i that I started for the 24-hour build done. Uh, it's pretty much almost there. I've got to get one more uh, headlight assembly finished, uh, detail painted, and then put it all together. Uh, and then I've got to bare metal foil one more of the kidney girls uh, because I'm not doing paint. I don't think it looks quite right. I'm actually taking the time to very, do a very fine bare metal foil thing around it, even though I goofed up the freaking windows. Uh, so this one will not be a show model. I, I was kind of leaning that way with it for a while, but I completely totally, uh, broke the windows. I uh, will admit to it. I broke them twice, actually, because I installed them incorrectly, and I managed to get a glue fingerprint on it. Take the time to learn an important lesson right there. I could have, I mean, I probably could have, or hell, you even might say I should have gone and gotten the glass out of another one because I got seven of them because, you know, it, I, but I decided because that has a chunky way to install the glass, and the glass is all one piece, uh, front windows, back windows, and all the side windows, all one big sort of a cup, and I decided that I would install it with super glue rather than the tacky glue. I use this stuff to do windows because it dries clear. It's water soluble. You hit it with with hot water and soap, it dissolves. Uh, if you hit it with too much decal solvent, it'll it'll dissolve and fall out too. I found that out the hard way. Uh, but this is what I do all my clear stuff with. And that's all good and well, but it doesn't, you know, stick real, real well, real, real fast. And I wanted to stick the windows in before I went to work at like 4.30 in the morning one morning. And I said, well, you know, I, I can stick these in here with, with uh, super glue, and I didn't stick them in there with super glue too far back, so now there's a weird gap around the front and back windows, because I was trying to get the wiper to, to display. Note, and I'll talk about this again when I get the kit done, do not put the wipers on this kit. It's worthless. Uh, it's just easier to leave them off. You'll never even know they're missing. Uh, and then somehow, and I don't know how, because I didn't touch anything as far as I knew, I managed to get a little bit of super glue, like right there on the edge of my finger, and I touched the side of the glass with it, and so now I have a about oh I'm trying to find a, like a bunch of little decal scraps down below me here. I have a, a super glue spot about this big, obviously in the shape of round in the shape of my thumb, on the side window, and I buffed the window out a little bit to get to cut it down to make it not quite so bad. But uh, you know what? It was a 24-hour build, and I'm just going to finish it off because if I was going to do it for a contest, there's a bunch of other stuff I'd have to do to it. I'd have to fill a bunch of stuff that I didn't fill as far as uh, seams and uh, do a bunch of seam removal. And I was just doing it for the 24-hour build to get it done. And finally, hopefully by next week, it'll be done and I can show it to you. And I won't just be sitting here talking about model kits. I'll actually have another build to show you guys. Uh, but like I said, I got a few. Uh, I'm still just finishing it out the way I was doing it, which is to make it look good. And to me, the, the, the little thin uh, chrome part around the kidney girl, which is bare metal foil, 
uh, has to be done, and then I've got to decal one whole side of it, because I've basically decaled one side of it to see how the decals would lay and how they're organized. i got to decal the whole other side of it, uh, put the mirrors on, and that'll be it. So it's it's almost there. almost have something to show you guys in that term. And uh, then we'll be on to the next one. I've got so many things that I want to build, I don't even know what the next one's going to be. Every time I come down here, I'm going to be, I should grab, uh, like, just finish what, we'll finish the, the BMW before we go on to anything else, so... We shall see. Anyway, guys, thanks for the patience. I know the last couple minutes here have just been babbling, so if you've hung up, kudos for you. See you guys on the other side.